There are 648,114 abandoned houses and commercial properties within the UK. They have been neglected by us and left derelict, which divides communities and leaves architecture bereft of use, a monument to the wasted carbon emissions that created them. We live in a world that preferences the human over everything else within it, including the built environment. This is the principal nature of subject-oriented ontology, SOO, and everything else is deemed as objects which only humans can understand. This comes from the anthropocentrism that Immanuel Kant postulated when he indicated objects are a product of human cognition and therefore only understood by them. However, more recently there has been a repudiation of this through the lens of object-oriented ontology, triple O. This states that all objects are made up of the same constituent parts and therefore have the same understanding of reality as any other object, with the objects now also including humans. This equality is based on the roots of Socrates and Plato who deemed that the only known known is that we cannot know. Triple O believes that objects have relationships with one another that are known and unknown. For instance, a stone is known to be grey, hard and semi-porous, but whether it is conscious or not is a subjective parameter that can only be known by the stone. The way we view architecture currently through our subjective oriented ontological lens is uh, as an unconscious being, an object to be used rather than cared for. Consequently, buildings are abandoned without a thought. Therefore, this thesis would aim to develop a master plan to rejuvenate the area of Vauxhall in Liverpool with buildings that can facilitate architecture that is conscious, sentient and mobile, summated by the term living. To provide a basis for design, the architecture would have a purpose within itself to protect its inhabitants from further pandemics and allow life for those people to remain somewhat normal within times of lockdowns and quarantines. To be able to facilitate this, it would be important to research all the various strands of kinetic and biomimicry architecture from the Chambies to the work of Neri Oxman. Or Triple O is a new world view. Architects such as Tom Wiscombe and Mark Foster Gage provide a guidance as to how this has been implemented so far. This thesis would therefore look to analyse how a new relationship between humans, a sentient or not architecture, and themselves, respectively, could develop. Consequently, looking at the many strands possible from the potential or not of a living architecture.
Le piaceva il suo 89 Shiraz. Hanno apprezzato la vista. Un edificio per godersi la moda. E conoscere la sua storia. Spazi per esplorare più arti. Essere ispirato da ciò che ti circonda. Dove la fondazione incontra il bordo dell'acqua. E le arti continuano. On day one, we observed a Baroque building which showed the conditions of surface architecture. Investigating the facades, we made key observations between traditional and newer construction through style and materiality. Working with parametrics, we identified the condition of transition between various factors including degree of intimacy, disconnection through materiality, and transition via spaces and thresholds. The theme of transition continued to be a key point throughout the trip and these models. Moving on from transitional spaces, we considered what connects them. The next task took us along a predefined section line, traveling from the Parco da Valentino and the Castello da Valentino School of Architecture to the opposite side of town to Turin Polytechnic. We made observations regarding expansion of space from the Castello del Valentino and the surrounding park, the central interior piazza of the station and the open spaces within the Polytechnic. The section reinforced the idea of transition as it followed a route from the wide public spaces of the park and the Polytechnic through narrow residential streets with a central open space containing the train, tram and bus stations of Puerto Nuova. The section line becomes an armature connecting not only two major programs, but generating a central node of the transport hub. From this connection, further nodes have plugged into the main armature and are making that central route stronger as a result, becoming the veins that feed into the heart of Turin, generating commerce and community through program. The third task took us to the Porta Palazzo market and how the community has created its own generators as far as income, support and accommodation in interconnect and coexist to create a harmonious micro-community in what is a low-income area of Turin. The site comprised of three distinct programmes, 
the pop-up community-led fruit and veg market and adjoining clothing market, which bustled with culture and local commerce. The indoor mall, which attempted to leech off the success of the pop-up, but failed as poor market research into the needs and wants of the community turned a new building into a shell, built over the remnants of an 18th century hypogeum icebox. Overlooking the outdoor marketplace, the original indoor meat market, porous thresholds along its facade allowing multiple entrances, its materiality opaque and inviting. Wide aisles give people views of the produce, beautifully displayed with care and sourced locally to sell to the local residents. This model shows how the light canopies of the outdoor market and the translucence of the meat market create glimpses of intrigue compared to the solidity of the redundant mall. Creating adaptable space would have provided the community with spaces to inhabit and change for their own purposes, creating a framework from which the user decides on the function, not the builder. To summarise, transitional spaces link to a central armature and create places for people to inhabit. Being able to adapt these places will create community-led design and a thriving, supportive local economy. Taking what we observed in Turin, we can directly apply the elements we took and made into parametric models and apply them to Colin Campbell Court. From this, we identified the possible need for a simi similar micro-community environment within the area to replicate the homegrown independent community that not only serves the wider context but has its own exchange network of skills and materials to continue supporting one another, enabling the area to flourish and grow, but keeping them together without making the area so desirable that it becomes too expensive for the residents to continue living there. Areas of intimacy that could seem uncomfortable need to be inviting. Physical barriers causing disconnection need to create safety without threat. The majority of the site functions as a car park, leaving no pedestrian walkways or communal areas for residents and for people to spend time in. Transitional spaces need to celebrate and announce the site, not create awkward and narrow thresholds which are hidden or missed by passers-by. The site of Colin Campbell Court and Frankfurt Gate is sited in one of the most rundown areas of Plymouth. It creates awkward transition spaces and uninhabited spaces which are ignored by people. The main building on site, originally called Barton House, was originally built as an Aston Martin showroom, which shows the area must have been more affluent in previous years. It now currently houses a budget furniture shop, and the upper floors redundant. Similar attributes were clear in Turin, where the thriving industrial hub of the Fiat factory had closed down. However, in recent years a huge restoration has reactivated it into a shopping mall. The outward-looking businesses do the opposite of the armature condition we observed on our section line in Turin. Instead of reinforcing the area, it is draining it. We identified four key conditions in both Turin and Plymouth and tried to think of solutions to them. If we remove the barriers, we can generate curiosity and attempt to bring people to the site. More care for the site of Colin Campbell Court needs to be apparent, both for the city and for the people that live there. The shops on the periphery of Colin Campbell Court all face outwards, turning their backs on the central car park area. There needs to be porosity on the site for both vehicles and pedestrians, residents and shoppers, in place of barred gates and narrow thresholds.
Well, man. 